Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I bring you another requested video. Someone wanted to know how do you prepare for a race. Well, the first thing you need to do is find yourself a race team. You can go here to the search. Uh, when you find a team, usually you just want to check their logs and that's usually how you can tell how good a team is then you need to figure out how many laps you need to prepare for since everyone's needs are different and they're going to be different for the sake of this video I will do a basic rundown of all the prep I know alright so race prep to me is something you do all month long uh, I'm not going to cover runes because I already did in my how to runecraft free to play for mythics and midits uh, there will be a link in the description to that video, and that should cover how to prepare you for runes. The next thing you need to do is make habitat space for monsters. You will be ranking to extract during race, and breed more to replace during race. How much space depends on how fast you want to make points. Four spots for each quest rank monster is the minimum in my opinion. Anything more will just help you rank faster. Some players who don't have space will have to build space or sell and extract monsters to make room. Extracting is almost always better than selling, but when deciding how to sell monsters, ask yourself, do you use the monster for wars or breeding? If the answer is no, I recommend selling any nose that make less than 244 GPM at level 50 plus. The minimum number of halves I recommend having empty is room for 24 monsters. That can mean 6 times level 4 halves, or 8 times level 3 halves, or even 12 times level 2 halves. But they should all be for your next race. I'm going to go ahead and arrange some halves here to give you an idea. Uh, these are the ones from a previous video where I was making a panda farm race halves. Alright, so these will be the halves that I'll be using this race to put all my race monsters in. Uh, I myself am actually going to have extra Friedel and Tarzape room, so by the end of this month when I'm ready for race, you guys will see the progression that I made throughout the month to get ready for race. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how many halves, and I squeeze them all right there. So, now you got an idea what it looks like. Maxing this as soon as you can, and you're maxing this as soon as you can. The reason is this is going to pretty much double your gold since all of your gold during a race is going to be used to farm food. Uh, and this here is going to make breeding epics no longer a thing that you hide from. You'll be able to breed an epic for seven gems. Go to monsters, and you need to buy a fire star. A Tracer, a Rockilla, a Thunder Eagle, a Mer Snake, and a Tyrannic King. And you need to level them all to four. They will be breeders. If you have a Volt, keep your breeders in there. If not, use a couple of your race hab spots. You use Thunder Eagle and Tyrannic King. Sell all the rares you get. Extract all the pterodactyl cells, though. So far, I'm up to a thousand. I'll be trying to get myself about 2,500 of them, I think, before I move on to the next. But you, you need to extract a thousand to 5k cells, depending on how many laps you're doing. Once you reach your goal, breed four to keep alive at level one and you will put them on your race half that you made for preparing for the race. So you want four of them like that. Next, breed T-Eagle with Firesaur to make Thundenix and Gigagram cells and those you want to keep all of them until you have 1k through 5k each of both of them. And then you, you do the same thing. 
you keep four of them for each race hab. But also breed one extra Thundenix to level up to four and save as a breeder. You can put it in your vault or just keep it with your other ones that you'll have in your race habs. Then do the same process for one through five K Friedels and Taurus Apes. The uncommons are up to you if you want to keep for the race also. Uh, I recommend if you keep the uncommons as well with the Friedels and Tars Apes that you basically go half and half. So you have 500 through 2,500 of each of them. And then four of the monsters. Then do the same thing for Pandas and Greenosaurs. And I'll show you what your cells should look like now. So now you should have these monsters and cells. I listed what quests they are prepared for next to them as well. Always work on the cells in this order, hard and slow ones before the short and fast ones because the longer breed times are harder to do during the race between nodes than the ones like pandas, for example. Now the next prep I want to talk about is gold and food. You want to save as much gold as possible for the race. Food, you really only need a couple million for the start of the race. For feeding quests, the gold will be used during the race to farm the biggest farms you can to keep ready and waiting to collect on collect food quests. The food you collect on race quests can be used to feed monsters for later feed quests, hence why you don't really need to farm a bunch of prep food. Farm it when you get paid points for it. Since everyone on your team will also be trying to collect food on food collect quests, a pro tip is to arrange your islands so that your farms are able to be clicked as fast as you can. There is no collect all food button, so you will have to keep in mind that if you miss clicky farm, you lose time. So I'll let you best decide where to put your farms, and I'll show you how I have mine set up. I do not have them all bunched in one spot because I find that I will accidentally click the same farm twice. So I keep eight of them separate down here in the bottom for when I have a big joint effort. Uh, and then I keep three of them in the middle for usually the do your parts and or the two on the left for the usually on the do your parts but I'm able to collect the five across the middle very fast like the tomato pops up uh, but the trick here is when the race is active you will be staying inside this image looking at the nodes and waiting for them to flip over as soon as they flip over you will exit out and it will bring you to your same view that you had when you entered so if you're zoomed all the way in like this and you're watching the race nodes and then your node flips over and you back out that's all you're going to be looking at so it's really hard to collect all of your food from that viewpoint you'd have to scroll around and click one at a time or zoom out and try to click them so i try to have it to where it's easily set up zoom wise to where i put my my uh race right up there by my gems and then I enter the race, I wait for the node to flip over. When the node flips over, if it's a food collect node, I can easily exit out and just start going boom, boom, boom around my circle and collect all eight of those foods super fast like. That's the strategy that I have. I would guess that you could probably even have a faster strategy if you put all of your farms in a circular motion on this island here because it's right next to it. Next, there are a lot of win multiplayer battle quests throughout a race, so I recommend you have as many PvP entries saved as possible by race start. I also suggest 24 hours before any race, you set up your PvP defenses to just one of your breeders, so that weaker than usual opponents will attack you, which will provide you easier revenges, and a total of 8 revenges at the start of a race waiting. When the race starts, you should set your PvP attack team to be able to kill three monsters in one hit. Like use an attacker with at least one AoE move and wear all strength runes, since a lot of times everyone in your team will be trying to complete win multiplayer quests at the same time, you want to be prepared to win as many as you can as fast as you can. The last part of race prep that I want to talk about is your extra pods the crafter and the rank up ones. If you use the first pod for something easy you can afford to lose it, well then 
let you rent the remaining three pods on each. How these three are ones available as soon as I put something in it, like uh, this guy. You know, it cost me a gem. I recommend trying to always have something in all six of your pods. If you don't want to spend a lot of gems, I recommend breeding extra pterodactyls to fill all six pods with. If you want to help your team, you can put epics or legends in the rank pods. It's also worth keeping note that if you don't want to pay 11 gems, you can try to breed Draconian Beast, and he ranks for one gem, and that's a big help to your team. If you can't afford the high gem costs for helping your team, just do what I did and put the pterodactyls in there, because you can use them for one gem to rank up Uncommon Wing. And then if you put them in your crafter... It will cost you two gems to put each one in the craft, but then when the Hatch Uncommon Dark Quest comes, you will be able to have them already ready as eggs and click to hatch them, and it will, should cost you, I believe, four or six gems to hatch one from a full egg. Now, if you're such a pro that you get all of this done before the race, you can use the Thundenix and Tarzate breeders you have to breed epics in attempts to breed Draconian Beast, who only cost one gem to rank. The other epic fails are great to feed for nature or thunder extracts for monsters like Graken or Hornet. And the non-epic fails can be sold or turned into extra race prep cells. If you're wondering why I haven't really went over gems, it's because every team I have been on has different rules and your gems should be saved and used to best make sure you complete your team's rules. But as a quick end note, I will list what I use my gems during the race for. This is basically how I try to spend my gems each race. Uh, between whether I'm trying to get points for myself or help my team out, uh, you kind of just find the balance in between. Uh, the laps, if I'm only getting the race monster, I try to spend less than 200. Anyway guys, I hope this helps. Thanks for uh, watching my channel. Later.